one is to the right. Let's say this is a positive direction. You have eight newtons, and this is in a negative direction. You are aiming, but vector is in an opposite direction, so you need to put a radial sign. Okay, newton, therefore, it's going to be five newton to the left, uh, to the right, sorry. to the positive x. Okay? Same way, I am telling you net force, net net is going to be some. Okay, but since they are in the opposite direction, you need to subtract. And I showed you last time that this one is bigger than this one, right? <laughs> so uh, you need to subtract this one. E plus minus B minus. And we did like a some, you know, like a calculation. I'm not going again in detail. Uh, you already have a, uh, like a calculation. That means the, the expression going to be. Uh, it was, I forgot that, uh, what was the expression? <clears throat> so you had an expression K, K, uh, there's a Coulomb constant, T over uh, E power Q, okay? And uh, I have a different factor of two over here. Different factor of two. What was the expression, do you remember? In terms of you know K, I mean Coulomb's constant. What was the expression for that? Like this, okay. Uh, 2k and q times d, okay. Q times d or dp. Here is the problem constant, okay. Uh, and charge times like you have charge is q, okay. And this is the like a distance between them. If you multiply this q times d, uh, I you the other rotation q, the dipole moment, q times z, okay, dipole moment, dipole moment, okay, dipole moment, uh, so you can use that in the same expression, kp over, p is a vector, okay, so the moment is a vector, d power, okay, e s. This is in it, okay? And uh, this is the expression for that. Excuse me. Are you two? Hello. We are in a class, okay? So over here, net electric field is 2k p over g power q, okay? Uh, k is column constant, and like some people write down, and then like, uh, uh, I mean, so it has a constant value, it's 8.99, 10 power uh, 9, okay? And some people write down in terms of 1 over 4 pi epsilon, okay? Epsilon naught is a positive you have to express, so it's up to you. But P is the dipole moment I have, you know, introduced. G is the distance between the center of dipole over here to the point P. This is the... G. Okay. So over here, this is expression. Okay. And uh, so I have introduced a vector. That vector P is a dipole moment. Okay. Over here, the net electric field is E plus minus E minus. Okay. So this one is bigger than this one. The net electric field is going to be along the direction of this E plus. Because you know, net electric field is going to be along this direction. I can just do it like that. E net. E net. Net electric field is like that. Okay? Another important. 
important thing over here I want to focus. You have a two vector in this expression, right? You have a two vectors. One is electric field, another one is dipole moment. Dipole moment is a vector, okay? Two is a number is scalar, k is a number is scalar, g. g is the distance. Distance is a is scalar number. So you have two vectors, you have a positive sign over here. That means, if you have two vectors and you have a positive sign in the expression, both vectors have the same direction. So over here, the dipole moment over here is going to be also along the direction of electric field. So net electric field is along this direction, the dipole moment is also along this direction. So dipole moment is, uh -uh, is basically negative to positive. So dipole moment or a dipole is always from the negative to positive direction. So if I have a combination of, you know, if I have a dipole, uh, if I want to introduce a dipole moment, the dipole moment has a direction from negative to positive charge. Okay, this is a dipole moment. Okay. So this is the, about the uh, what we discussed in the last lecture. It's very interesting. Uh, we actually went through the, all of the calculations. So, um, so this is about the uh, electric field. Okay. Um, so now uh, we talk about the uh, what gonna happen. What gonna happen uh, if I have okay? If I have consider a point not along the axis of the uh, along the axis of the uh, along the axis of uh, this you know this diaper. Anyone of you guys can tell me if I have a point not at that point. Uh, over here, let's say, let's say you have a, this point is along this along the length of the dipole. If I consider a point over here, let's say, point P. Okay, and this is like something you know I want to give to you guys. Okay, play with the expression. Okay, let's say I have a dipole. It's going to be a little bit you know, challenging, uh, you know. If I want to find an electric field at this point P, that is not along the axis of dipole like this. How you find the expression for electric field? Let's say uh, this point is, let's say R plus. Okay? The distance is R plus for this one. This is plus R minus R. <laughs> And this is the center over here. Okay. Ask. If I want to ask, hey, what gonna be the expression for the dipole moment? Uh, sorry, not dipole moment, sorry, uh, for the electric field at this point. Let's say this you know like a center line makes an angle of theta over here. With uh, you know, like a vertical direction or axis of dipole, what do you think the electric field expression over here, the net electric field, gonna be what kind of the expression? Net electric field is is it going to be same or a little bit different? Two k t dipole moment divided by. Uh, okay. This is r. I consider r over here. The distance from the center of the dipole. I just consider r. So this is gonna be r t. Is it going to be like this or a little bit different? Mm -hmm. Or it will be a little bit different? What do you think? What do you think? Is it going to be same or a little bit different? It's not going to be same because it's like a not uh, at the along the direction of dipole, along the axis of dipole, you make a, some angle theta. So this theta has to be deflected somehow in the expression, okay? Um, if you want, I can assign as a homework for you guys, okay? Uh, 
So if you solve it, if you solve it, you will get a one factor. I mean, uh, you can get a one factor over here. Uh, and a cosine zero, just like that. Cosine zero. You will get, you know, I mean, more or less similar expression, but you have a factor of cosine theta. You see some factor like cosine theta. Okay, um, so uh, and then this is going to be like a general point because you know whenever you derive you know like this point P, this point is like random. Okay, it can be over here, it can be over here, it can be along the axis, it can be along this direction because this is an expression for the general expression. Okay, in the general expression, general expression. The general expression in a physics or like in a mathematics means that it is valid for any point around the dipole. Okay? So we want to have like a general expression because general expression is the one that describes, you, know, uh, you know, like a for everything. Okay? This is a specific example that your point should be along the direction of dipole. Along the axis of dipole over here, right? This is expression only for if your point P is along the axis of dipole. If it is a little bit far away, it's not getting some angles, it doesn't work. Okay? So over here, if this is a general expression, it should help to explain this one also. Let's say your point P is over here. Let's say your point P is over here. So uh, if point P is over here, P, so you have R in the distance, because this is going to be R is the distance between the distance to the center. R. How this expression is going to change? It will be E max will be 2K. What is the angle? If the axis is uh, along the, if the point is along the axis of the what will be angle? Zero. Cosine theta is one. So it will be so this expression is same as this expression. Okay. So uh, over here, uh, that is what you have to know. And uh, if I have a point. Over here, point P. So at that time, angle is 90. What is the net electric field at that time? Zero. Zero. If the if your point is perpendicular to the axis of a dipole, it will be zero. Okay, this is a general expression for such an So this is like, you know, like of some uh, information. If you want, I can assign as a homework for you guys. If you want to like do some calculation. And especially, I mean, you have a very long weekend next week. Um, you have a whole week is off for your, I mean, like spring break. If you want to work with like some calculation, I can assign as a homework for you guys. Why some people don't like it because during this spring break they want to go out and go to the family. You know. um, I'm flexible if you want to have you know, uh, this problem as a homework. I can decide to find the general expression for the electric field. Okay? So, uh, anyway, so this is about the uh, electric field due to a dipole. Um, so dipole is very important. I mean, definitely in the chemistry, especially, is very important. Chemistry, and then if you are uh, going to engineering, also is very important. Um, so what to happen if you put a charge or like if you put a, like a dipole in the electric field? Okay. So we're gonna talk about the um, electric field uh, uh, in the in the dipole. So we already have that one. So what gonna happen? If I put the dipole in the electric field. So over here, let's say you have a dipole, I mean you have a Q 
ये हम
the diaphragmatic aligns along the direction of the electric field. The diaphragmatic aligns along the direction of the electric field. Because of the shock, the electric field is like this, uh, over here, the electric field is like this. So dipole expands your torque, dipole expands your torque, if you place it in the electric field, an expression for torque is given by, so I am not going to the derivation, the torque for the dipole in the electric field is given by P cross E. P cross E. This is a vector product of dipole moment and electric field. If you want to express in the, like a, some uh, mathematical term, so over here you can say P If you know the angle between these two vector, P times E, I just take the magnitude is sine theta. Theta is the angle between electric field and the dipole moment vector. There are two vectors, if they have an angle of theta, then it's given by, torque is given by P cross E, which is P E sine theta. Okay. Another thing that you know, uh, this potential energy. I'm not going like in you know, like derivation for this one. Uh, so, uh, and this is a very small topic in the in the in your in your class dipole. Um, there are some other interesting things to discuss also. Um, so once you have dipole like this, you rotate this one. You rotate. And you use the force to rotate this one. So you have a work done. Work done in the electric field. This work done is given by, the work done is given by change in potential energy. Okay? Change in potential energy, delta U. Delta U. What is given by? Minus UF minus. Final minus initial, okay, change in potential energy. And potential energy is given by, potential energy is given by, U is given by P dot E, P dot E, dipole movement times, uh, let me write that. So negative of P dot E is the potential energy. So P, 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 So theta is the angle that the dipole uh, movement bends in the direction of the electric field and potential energy given by P equals sine theta, negative of P equals sine theta and uh, if you have a change in potential energy, you get a walk down whenever you align your dipole in the direction of the field. All right, so this is about the dipole and uh, electric field due to dipole and what gonna happen if you place a dipole in electric field, okay? So this is expression for that. Uh, I didn't go like a derivation for this one, how to find the expression for torque and how to find the expression for the electric, I mean, this uh, potential energy because it's too many mathematics, so I don't want to go in the detail. So, now uh, let me uh, show one of the problem that, um, how to uh, use this one to solve one of the um, problem in the, uh, this uh, water molecule, okay? Um, so I told you that water molecule, uh, water is like one of the very strengths thing in the nature and uh, oxygen is very strong electromagnetic and then hydrogen is like a, you know it has one electron it wants to pull towards the center of the oxygen atom so you have a dipole movement over there so if you remember I told you that in the water has a combination of the water molecule makes some kind of electric structure this is the oxygen you have a hydrogen over here over here okay 
and oxygen is very strong electronegative. That means it pulls the one electron of the hydrogen. You have a hydrogen that has one electron over here. It wants to pull along this direction. Same way over here, it wants to pull along this direction. One electron. Once it pulls, this area is going to be slightly negative charge. You have a delta plus charge. So delta minus charge. You have a delta plus charge. Water molecule is molecule is like a neutral in general. Okay? But because of this like the strong electronegativity of this you know, oxygen, it makes a polar molecule. Water is a polar molecule, okay? I don't know whether you have you know, like gone through this you know uh, thing in the chemistry or not, but water is a polar, this is polar, okay? Um, that means you have a small, slightly negative charge over here in this area. You have a slightly positive charge over here, and you have a small distance. You have a dipole moment, like have dipole moment, and dipole moment is going to be some negative to positive direction. Dipole moment is going to be like this. Dipole moment is going to be. So we have a dipole moment like this, that's water molecule. Same, same like an ammonia, NH3. I don't know how many of you guys know ammonia, NH3. And uh, carbon dioxide also a little bit slightly polar. Okay, uh, I don't know how many of you guys you know, you like know about that. Anyway, so you have one from over here, you have A, B, C, D, I mean, as A, B, C, so, um, um, let me see how far I can uh, I can go over here. A neutral water molecule. So water molecule is like a neutral, but um, in the vacuum state has an electric dipole moment of 6.2 10 power minus 30 coulomb meter. It's a very small value. 10 power minus 30. Right? It's a very small number. But such a small number also like you know make your behavior something very strange. Okay? Such a small number, small dipole movement also make your uh, molecule also behave something strange way. Okay? Um, now how far apart are the molecule center of the positive and negative charge? You have given a dipole movement for a water molecule in the dipole state, you need to find the distance. Okay? You need to find the distance, distance you need to find. The slightly negative charge, slightly positive charge, you have given the dipole moment, you need to find what is the T value. Distance. So uh, let's go uh, quickly about this one. You have given the dipole moment over here. Um, there are, I mean, 10 electrons and 10 photons neutral water molecules. So basically, only when you talk about the main charge, so you have given the dipole moment, you can write down the T, okay, which is a very small value, uh, which is 6.2, 6.2 times 10 power. Uh, um, minus 30, 40, Coulomb meter, okay? So dipole moment is Coulomb meter. I need to find D, okay? What is the D value, okay? Um, so um, this is a part A, I need to find the D value, okay? And according to, I mean, uh, according to formula for the dipole moment, T is given by uh, Q times D. You 
find the net charge and in the water molecule the total number of the total charge is the 10 electron the 10 electron times d and the 10 times the charge of one electron is 1.6 times 10 power minus 19 kilo times d so P is given, see this value is known, it's a uh, 6.2 times 10 power minus, minus 40. So whatever the value you get from this expression, P is the exact number. And definitely this D will be very small number, right? Because like uh, we have such a small number. But you can express in like a small unit like picometer or nanometer if you like it. So in this expression, on the left hand side is one, just you know, divide on the both side by um, both side by this number. 10 times 1.6 times 10 power 19. You can cancel out, you have a D on the that one. You have a 10 times 1.6 times 10 power 19. Okay. So it's up to you how you're gonna get the number. Okay, uh, in the part B and C, part B and C are a little bit, you know, like, uh, uh, now uh, we are like talking about the putting in the dipole in the electric field, so you have given the electric field. Here the molecule is placed in the electric field, so now we are placing the water molecule in the electric field, okay? And value of electric field is given 1.5 and 5 minus 4 newton per coulomb. What is the maximum torque can the fuel adjust on it? I can place this in you know, like a dipole in the electric field, right? The expression is given by, I just erase that one. I erase that one. Uh, so the expression for uh, the expression for um, torque is given by it was uh, P cross E, I believe, which is same as magnitude of P E sine theta. Let's try to just talk about magnitude of it. I need to find maximum value of torque. I just erase the vector, vector sign because I'm just talking about the magnitude of it. Maximum value. Okay. Your torque depends on angle. Do you agree with that? And distributive magnetic function is very strange, you know, like uh, sometimes in zero, sometimes it's like one. Sine zero is like a zero, sine 90, sine 90 is like a one, sine, I mean, uh, sine 30, sine, you can have like many angles in between, so sine 30 is like a 0 0.5, and sine, sine 180 degree is gonna be negative one, something like that, you know, it's a zero. Sine 180 is like zero, right? Sine um, um, 270, what is the value? Negative one. Sine 360 gonna be zero. So this is gonna be your value locked between the zero to one, right? The matching value is gonna be one. 
So uh, it's gonna happen at ninety degree. So you you are considering maximum value. So basically, you take as a p p maximum gonna happen at sine ninety degree. Okay. So what what that means? Ninety degree means that your epsilon dipole is perpendicular to the direction of the electric field. Okay, that's going to be your true and false question, by the way. At what time dipole experience the maximum torque? Whenever you have, whenever you have dipole like this, this angle is 90 degree. If your axis of dipole is perpendicular to the direction of the electric field, you have a 90 degree. At that time, you will experience the maximum torque. Maximum torque is given by is a sine 90 is a 1, so you have a P, P, 1. So P value is given according to that, you know, uh, you have P is 6.2 times 10 power minus 30. And electric field is just given over here. I don't know what, what it is. Electric field is given 1.5, 1.5 times 10 power 4, right? So whatever the number you get, that's going to be your torque and torque in weight in newton meter because newton force and like the, some distance is called torque. So whatever the number, that's going to be your um, um, the torque. That's a maximum torque in engine. Okay. Um, part C. I mean, uh, this is like work done. Um, I will solve part A and B. Uh, if you don't mind, do you want to try part C? I'm going to give a hint, you know. Um, how much work is done? I just erased, you know, how much work is done. I mean, the expression for work is done. Um, the expression for how much work is done. So, um, so the part C, I need to find the work done which is given by uh, delta u, negative or delta u, okay? And you have minus final minus initial, right? Final potential energy minus initial potential energy, right? The expression for potential energy is given by minus p dot p, and it's going to be minus p p, of sine theta. Let's say you are talking about initial something number and you have some final something. Let's say you have initial angle, you have some final angle, you get some I mean, uh, standard expression minus P P sine some angle sine. So over here, how much work is Drawn by the field, actually, as it to do, rotate the molecule by 180 degree in this field, starting from fully aligned position. Theta is zero. The initial angle is what is the initial angle? Theta I. zero. Starting from the aligned position, theta i equal to zero, you have some initial potential energy. You have some theta f, which is 180 degree. You have a corresponding potential energy because this is a p is given, p is given. You can get one value, you have one, get one value. Can you just subtract to get a work done? Right? So you get some number over here. Actually, I'm not going to do that like this, some other work. You have one number, you have one number, and just plug it over here. What is the theta i value? I mean, u i value, what is u f value? Just plug it, and you check with the answer. You have given answer also. So uh, whatever answer, I mean, uh, you can just, you know, uh, compare with that. All right. Any question about this problem? 
All right, so now, so uh, because I spent a lot of time over here, um, uh, I'll give you another example also that you know, um, you have a same thing that you have a dipole and you have a dipole moment is given and you define the dipole moment, you have a given charge. Let me uh, briefly explain about another part. I didn't know that you know, we have another part. Um, you have another form over here. Electric dipole constitution of charge, the magnetic area given the charge value Q, which is 1.5 nanocoulomb. Okay, it's a nanocoulomb. You have to change this one to coulomb. 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb. You have given the charge. And they are separated by a distance of 6.2 micrometer. You have a distance is D, okay, which is 6.20 uh, micrometer, which is 6.20 times 10 power minus 6 meter. We express everything in the SI unit. Now, what is the, it is placed in the electric field of, electric field value is given. Electric field is given, so 1100. You have given like this. What are the magnitude of the electric dipole moment? Any capital electric dipole moment? Yes, electric dipole moment is given by the formula. I mean, uh, I just erased that one. Dipole moment is given by. The charge times like a distance between the dipole. So you just use that one, okay? Dipole moment is given by you know, P is Q times D. So Q is given, D is given, whatever the value you get, that's going to be your dipole moment. B, the difference between the potential energy from the dipole orientation parallel and anti parallel to E. You take the difference of the potential energy. Okay? Delta U. Okay? Whenever you have orientation parallel and anti parallel. Okay? One should be go first and another should go first, a second. Okay? Parallel and anti parallel. Uh, difference between the potential energy. Uh, for the orientation parallel, so I mean, you, I think you can, uh, you can like a parallel and anti parallel. I think you just take a magnetic value, anti parallel, so the what? Uh, anti parallel, okay, anti parallel, parallel and anti. You have like a you know, two potential energy, just take a difference, right? So what is uh, you know, like a U parallel expression? Yeah. Okay. 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 U and T. So do you have a same expression for U, which is given by P E P E Sine, theta, minus, yeah. 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 That is parallel to the field, what going to be the angle? Parallel. So whenever we define the, uh, I mean, expression, let me you know, like be clear about this one, because in the exam, uh, you need to be very, because there will be some questions definitely from the, uh, from this, you know, uh, topic. Uh, so whenever you define the, you know, uh, expression, it's a dipole, it's a positive, it's a negative charge. So you find the angle, this angle between these two vectors. It's a vector, it's another vector. So
So if you have the tire pushing a line along this direction of the electric field, so you have to be along this direction. So theta is going to be zero. So you're going to have a cosine zero. So whatever the number you get, any parallel, so you're going to be have minus p e. I just like it like this. Cosine. What going to be the expression if it is anti parallel? Mm -hmm. huh? Anti parallel. This is the parallel this direction. Anti parallel going to be this one. What going to be the angle between this vector and this vector? Mm -hmm. 180. So you have parallel is like this one. Anti parallel is going to be like this. So you got angle going to be theta going to be 180. So you have given the what is the p value? You just got p value from the calculation part A. Electric field is given. Just use this one, and you can get the this expression and plug it over here. That's it. Okay. Um, so after this, um, I think I finished this topic. I believe uh, we're gonna discuss about the. Uh, chapter 23, we are going to do the Gauss law. Um, I, you know, like briefly mentioned about this one. Uh, there is going to be like uh, some uh, topic that, uh, a little long topic and interesting topic also. Um, we are going to talk about different things over here um, in the in this chapter. Uh, let me talk about the uh, Gauss law actually. And uh, basically, how we talk about the um, how the Gauss law gives the relation between the the flux. Okay, uh, we're gonna talk about the flux. And um, the flux is the one quantity like uh, uh, that we have to always think of uh, whenever you want to calculate the electric field due to some charge. Okay, um, and Gauss law gives the relation between the flux uh, and uh, charge is equal by the Gaussian process. Okay, uh, so let me talk about this one, and uh, after that I will finish the class for today. Um, so before that, um, I ask the same question to the student. Uh, this week, you know, I'm gonna assign the homework for you. Okay, and uh, when you want to have a due date, do you want to have a due date next Wednesday? Or a week after. Next, a week so, after. So because I, I want to, you know, you guys, you know, enjoy your like spring break, you know. Um, if I give a like a, I mean, due date on Wednesday, you know, you need to work on the homework forms, and then if you need a help, you cannot come to the help lab because it's gonna be closed. Okay. So um, and then also you will be maybe outside, or you might be like a crowd somewhere. So it will be difficult for you to submit the homework. So I'm gonna give like a you know, like a due date, not like a this week, this uh, Wednesday, but next like you know a week after that. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the this Gaussian process and Gaussian law. Okay. And I just introduce a little bit and then finish the class because this is gonna be a little bit challenging topic. Um, and we're gonna do like a main. Uh, Integration dimension. Uh, All right. So let me introduce what is the flux. Okay. So there are like a one a terminology we call this flux, and we call it the electric flux. Electric flux. And we also talk about magnetic flux in the magnetism. Magnetic flux. So we just focus right now the electric flux. The electric flux is the number of electric field lines passing through a surface. Okay? Let's say you have a surface like this. You can have a surface you know, uh, like this. And uh, this is a surface that you know the electric field lines is passing through this one. Let's say you have surface and electric field along this direction. 
And I mean, you have like a many electric field like, I mean, like this in the vector, okay? And this bar arrow. And if the angle between the electric field and normal in the surface is theta, then the flux, the flux I refer to as phi E. If A is the cross section area, it's given by E A phi C. In general, the flux means number of electric field lines passing through the surface. Okay? The definition of electric flux is that number of electric field lines electric field field lines passing to the to the okay. Let's say you have you know, one process like this. Okay. And how many electric field lines you pass through the surface? electric field lines over here. That is the definition of flux. Flux is like, you know, you need to count how many electric field lines it pass through the surface. But as I told you that, these electric field lines or magnetic field lines, they are imaginary lines. They are not real lines over there. We cannot see with the naked eyes. You know, we cannot count how many electric field lines are there. Okay? So best way to explain is by this formula, phi is given by E a cosine theta. Let's say you have an A in the cross section area of this you know, surface. And theta is the angle that electric field match with the normal to the surface. Then Flux is given by E A cosine theta. Okay, it's a general expression. Okay. So each electric field is along this direction, electric field lines are in this direction. Okay. The electric field can be, the flux can be maximum or minimum. So phi E is maximum and what angle? Because it depends on angle again. The electric field value is going to be the same, area is going to be the same for the given surface. Your electric flux depends on the angle that makes with the normal to the surface. Right? What is the maximum value? And what angle your flux is maximum. So maximum value, I can say maximum. The maximum and minimum over here. The maximum is that only when you have this cosine theta is one. Because it's trigonometry function, sine, cosine, tangent, they all like a, take like a value of one at a maximum. Okay? So if this is one, then I have a maximum, so it's going to be E A. What is the minimum value? Yeah, cosine zero is one. It's a maximum value, okay? Maximum. Let's see what that's. Maximum value. Yeah. So what is the minimum value? Zero. The minimum value for this figure of magnetic function is zero, and that happens at cosine ninety. So let's take a look on what is happening over here. So here, what is happening over here? Uh, that why the maximum value happens at theta equal to ninety, and theta is zero, theta equal to zero, theta equal to ninety. Let's take a look on that. If you have 
theta equal to 0. If theta equal to 0, then the electric, the electric field line is going to be along the direction of perpendicular. So all the field lines pass through this surface. Okay? If theta is equal to 90, the electric field is going to be like this, parallel to the surface. That means all the field lines are going to be along this direction. There are no electric field lines passed through the surface. So because of that, the net flux is going to be zero. Because the flux is a measure of how many electric field lines pass through the surface. If your electric field is along this direction, there are no electric field lines pass through along the surface. Okay? That is the reason that you have a zero electric flux whenever it is equal to 90 degrees. Okay? So this is the electric flux and we use a lot uh, in the you know uh, in the in the electricity and magnetism. Uh, electric flux, magnetic flux, and uh, you might know electromagnetic induction, Faraday law. I mean in the in the I mean we're gonna talk about that electromagnetic induction, uh, how the dynamo is going to produce electricity, right? How the hydropower works. We're gonna talk about based on this flux. Okay. The flux is always a measure of how many electric field lines or magnetic field lines pass through the cross section. Okay. Um, if you have like you know a magnetic field and then whenever you rotate the magnetic field, uh, and the coil rotates in the magnetic field, then the flux is gonna change. Whenever you have flux is changing over there, you produce the electric field. That is the I mean, electric uh, magnetic is called electromagnetic induction, and that is the current, and that is how the Hydropower works. Okay, so we talk about that uh, in a couple of lectures. Uh, I mean, uh, later. On. So I don't want to go further than this one. Um, so uh, I'm gonna post some homework. The future gonna be after the spring break. So I will see you guys in the spring break. Yeah, that sounds like a problem. Yeah, one problem.